Well, David Wilcock, for one, who's a, just a womanizer. So he's the one who met aliens, right? And he's also considered to be... Play the, aliens? The, I don't know. I don't remember much of... All I remember is that he's considered to be the reincarnation of Edgar Cayce. Who's that? Uh, Edgar Cayce is a famous prophet, sleeping prophet, um, around the 40s or 50s. Okay. Yeah. Never and heard of uh, him. so he claims he looks exactly like him, and all the people in his life look exactly like him. And he's a womanizer. So he's just yeah, using so this to have women. I find that a lot of people were using it to exploit others. And I wasn't interested in exploiting others. I, again, wanted to be good and, and do what was right and help selflessly. Um, but you can't help people with these kind of ideas and beliefs now, I realize, because they just contradict themselves. But like with um, David Wilcock, he made uh, the CD that was like $500 that was all about the ascension. Um, mm -hmm. And it was just him singing about him being in the bed with a woman and they're one. And that's somehow supposed to help oh. you to get to the fifth dimension. Right. During 2012. That's yeah. such a scam. Yeah. yeah, exactly. With the next wave that's coming in 2009, as we head into 2010, 2011, they're going to start happening every couple months. And then they're going to start happening every couple weeks. And then they're going to start happening in every couple days. By the time we get to 2012, we're going to be hitting new ones every hour and towards the end it's it's multiple times per second okay now my readings have told me for what it's worth that some of us will be able to have ascended abilities i mean full-on ascended abilities prior to the actual shift happening so that would be very cool because what we're expecting after 2012 is a 100 times more harmonious utopian world where things like time travel, levitation, instant telepathy, instant healing, telekinesis are as common and as everyday as breathing. That's yeah. such a scam. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Gravity is flowing into this area of space and inside the area, inside the sphere, gravity is turning into electromagnetic energy. And electromagnetic energy is turning into gravity. It's, you have to use the orgasmic energy, apparently. There's something about the orgasmic energy. You click on that little gear shift on YouTube, and playback speed, you can set it to 0 0.75 and slow my crazy ass down. What we're expecting after 2012 is a 100 times more harmonious utopian world where things like time travel, levitation, instant telepathy, instant healing, telekinesis. With the next wave that's coming in 2009, as we head into 2010, 2011, they're going to start happening every couple months, and then they're going to start happening every couple weeks, and then they're going to start happening in every couple days. By the time we get to 2012, we're going to be hitting new ones every hour. Honest to God. This is true, folks. And also, The Rock refers to Jesus. Uh, so there's several, or The Rock of Ages is another name they give for him. Well, what you find out is that the reason why they called Jesus The Rock of Ages is that the pyramid predicted his arrival. The Great Pyramid belongs to us. It belongs to Christians. And I do identify as Christian, okay? And I'm sorry if that makes some people angry. But I always invoke the name of Christ when I'm trying to get any communication with these higher beings. People can meditate and, and use black magic and get it to work. It's about the will. You think I want to talk about this? You think I want to be up here on this fuck camera talking about this shit? What follows is the case of Bill D's experience that took place in Christmas, Florida in 1976. His abduction started out typically late at night in bed. Earlier in the evening, he saw some anomalous lights through the living room window over a forest north of his house. He assumed it was a police helicopter searching for drug runners or something. Whatever it was, it agitated his dogs for several hours thereafter. He eventually went to bed. He was lying in bed, kept wide awake by the barking dogs when paralysis set in. He was unable to cry out. He could, he could see nothing but a whitish gray, like a mist or a fog although he sensed someone or something was in his room. His wife didn't awaken. The next thing he knew, he was being levitated above his bed. He then had the sensation he was being suspended by what felt like a pole inserted into his rectum. By this time, he was alive with terror, but couldn't scream. Here's where the story becomes very interesting. The following is an excerpt taken directly from the transcript of Mr. D's interview. 
I thought I was having a satanic experience, that the devil had gotten a hold of me and had shoved a pole up my rectum and was holding me up in the air. So helpless, I couldn't do anything. I said, Jesus, Jesus, help me, or Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When I did, there was a feeling or a sound or something that either my words that I had thought or the words that I had tried to say or whatever had hurt whatever was holding me up in the air on this pole. And I felt like it was withdrawn and I fell. I hit the bed because it was like I was thrown back in the bed. I really can't tell, but when I did, my wife woke up and asked why I was jumping on the bed. Typical type of experience. I hear this many times, you know, same scenarios. In all the research we had done, we had never heard of a case of anybody stopping an experience. All the researchers, the top researchers, were saying that this could not be done. You couldn't stop an abduction experience. They had no record of it. So here I am with a case where a guy says he called out in the name of Jesus and stopped an experience. Was this one case unusual? But I knew I had something powerful. When God showed me to go back and look at this video, I knew this was something unique. And if I could confirm that it wasn't just unique in that one case, then this could be absolutely huge in the UFO community. I contacted these top researchers in the country. I said, guys, I've got a case here. I don't know what to make of it. I shared them the case. Each time I did, they asked, can we go off the record? And I said, sure. I can't tell you their names, but I can tell you what they said. Each one of them said, yes, sir, we've come across cases like this ourselves, where they've been able to stop it using prayer or Jesus' name. I said, excuse me, how come we have never seen this documented? You're telling us otherwise, that it can't be done, it can't be stopped. First answer they usually gave us, we didn't know what to make of it. I would have been fine with that. The second answer is what puzzled me and got me kind of angry. They, because it was that one that I want you to hear for sure. They said, we couldn't go there because it might affect our credibility in the realm. Do I hear cover-up? Did I mention government? No, I didn't. What I'm telling you is there's a cover-up about this information, and has been, by the top researchers that you people rely on to hear the truth from. I said to them, you know, guys, I got nothing to lose. I work for a living. I don't write books. I don't do all this stuff that you do. I said, I just want to document this as a researcher. So I went after those cases because I now knew they were there. Over the next 10 years, I have now worked with over 400 cases of people that have been able to stop the abduction experience in the name and authority of Jesus Christ. This is documented evidence, okay? Documented evidence. Hey guys, Ashley D. Will here. And today I just wanted to give a little bit of um, an expansion on the how to stop an alien abduction. Um, that was kind of a real short video and we did explain that and we hit on the point how Jesus Christ is the name that can stop and then the force and the power that can stop an alien abduction when you call on that name. But I didn't really explain why and I feel like it deserves an explanation. So I'm going to make this part two. And I just wanted to go into why the name of Jesus Christ instantly stops an alien abduction. If you read in the scriptures, the holy scriptures of the Bible, the name of Jesus Christ and he himself stops demons in their tracks. It causes demons to tremble. It causes demons to plead and cry for mercy. Okay, this is really important because the name of Jesus Christ is the name of the creator of the universe. You can't go any higher than that. Okay, you need to think about that. That's, that's extremely significant when you're talking about power, ultimate power, and deliverance from something. Let's just think about some other names. 
do demons tremble and flee at the name of Gandhi? No, they don't. Do demons tremble and flee at the name of Buddha? No, they don't. Do demons tremble and flee and cry for mercy at the name of Confucius? No, they don't. Do demons tremble and flee and cry and plead for mercy at the name of Allah or Muhammad? No, they don't. Do, dem do demons tremble and flee at the name of Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy, Barack Obama? No, they don't. There's only one name in all the universe which causes demons to tremble and flee and cry out for mercy, and that is the name of Jesus Christ. And they do that because he has the power to throw them into the pit, the pit of hell. That is the power that he possesses as the creator and the owner and the sustainer of the universe. By his will and power, all things are given life and all things are sustained. So by, by his very will and power, I am breathing my next breath. My heartbeat is beating its very next beat. And the same with you. You are breathing your next breath and your heart is beating its, its next beat because he is willing it. And like I've said before in some other posts, when your days are numbered, you're going to be out of the body and you're going to be face to face with the reality of Jesus Christ and everything that he has said and that he does say and that he will say and that is the Word of God. So that's where I'm going to get this information. That is the ultimate source for truth. And so if you want to know about freedom from evil, if you want to know about more about <clears throat> how to be free from alien abductions or demonic influence, it's the same thing. The demonic spirits, spirits parade as aliens, as, as angels of light. They do that in a lot of uh, ways, and we can talk about that in some other posts. But I just wanted to go into why that was so. And I'm just sharing that uh, the way you can stop an alien abduction is by calling on the name of Jesus Christ because he is the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus Christ is the beginning and the end. Jesus Christ is life itself, and how you uh, deal with him and who you say he is and whether or not you have a relationship with him determines whether you have union with him in life, now and after you're out of the body, or whether you will perish in death after you leave your body. So this all goes back to the Holy Scriptures, which is the plumb line for reality, who is Jesus Christ. The written Word of God is the Holy Scriptures, and the living Word of God is Jesus Christ. So I would encourage you to get into truth and learn more about ways that you can have power, victory, and dominion over evil. And I really encourage you to do that because you can stop an alien abduction and you can stop many other things. Um, in the name of Jesus and through the wisdom of Jesus and through the power of Jesus Christ. But you got to know Him and you've got to walk with Him. And I encourage you to do that. So I just wanted to give a little bit of a clarification on how to stop an alien abduction and why that's even important and why it happens that way. Because Jesus Christ, the buck stops with Him. He's the highest power. So I hope that something I've said has been helpful. And I hope that you have a great day. God bless you.